Hello, and welcome to the Tracy.4 feature presentation. Right off the bat you can see that there was a visual uplift of the application. The timeline view now occupies the whole profiler window and no longer obscures other windows. The user interface has been generously sprinkled with icons, which make finding the right button a tiny bit easier. You will also no longer need to resize the profiler window, as its position is now saved between sessions. Note that the previous floating timeline window functionality is still available for embedded use cases. Opening a saved trace will now display progress window. Collapsed zones are now drawn with the zigzag pattern. The same applies to frames. Powering the mouse over items on the memory usage plot will now display the allocation time range. Also note that memory values are now correctly printed as kilobytes, megabytes, and gigabytes. Clicking on the memory allocation will now open memory allocation information window. It will also keep the allocation range highlighted. You can zoom the timeline to that range using the appropriate button. The highlight is also implemented on any memory allocation list, for example the one in zone information window. Left click on the memory address will open the allocation window, while middle clicking the address will zoom to the range. Covering the mouse over a zone will now highlight other zones with the same source location. This can be quite useful in some cases. You can now draw the range on the timeline using the middle mouse button and the view will zoom to the selected region. If the control button is pressed, the zoom direction is reversed. Clicking on the message marker will focus the message list on the selected message. Markers are now highlighted, if a message on a list is hovered over. Clicking on the message will center it on the screen. The same can be done by middle clicking the marker. The zone information window now has a source code view button. Be aware that this is your local copy of source code, and not necessarily the one that the profiled application was built from, hence the bit fat warning. Also, for this functionality the source files must be available in the same location as in the capture. You can also open the source view by right clicking on the source locations in most places in the user interface. If the source file can be found, a little animation will be played to indicate this. The memory window has gained a tree view, which displays memory allocations grouped according to their call stack. As mentioned earlier, right-clicking on the source location will open the source file view. While right-clicking at the function name will open the complete list of allocations at the selected tree level. Tracy now supports multiple frame sets. Here we can see render frames and game logic update frames. You can select the active frame set by using the drop-down list button next to the frames counter. Notice that the logic update frames are now projecting down the frame separator lines and the frame time graph at the top has changed. It is also possible to have discontinuous frame sets. For example, you could use it to mark audio mixing callback execution. The Find Zone menu now displays average and median function execution times. These values are also displayed on the histogram. When a zone group is selected, another pair of time markers is displayed. Also note the new grouping and sorting options, and the group time display. The zones matching the selected source location are now highlighted on the timeline view. In the options menu there are now additional details about locks, plots, threads, etc. The select all and unselect all buttons are small quality of life improvements. The newly added trace information window displays various data about the capture, such as the current memory usage, the captured program name and capture time, the timer accuracy, counts of captured zones locks etc., the current frame set statistics, and the information about client that performed the capture. The frame times can also be displayed on the histogram. The frame set selection determines what data is displayed. If your application should crash, Tracy will be now able to intercept that. The crashed thread is indicated with the red label. The crash marker is hard to miss and provides additional details. Clicking on it will show even more data. You can even view the crash call stack. And then view the source code. 
The connection protocol is now more robust, disallowing things such as connecting to an incompatible client, or connecting to a client that is no longer able to provide correct data. More importantly, a new on-demand mode allows to have Profiler on a standby. You can connect to the client at any time, without paying the memory cost, at the price of not having profiling history. Last but not least, there's now a completely new user manual, which covers in detail the client setup required for the profiler to work, the markup instructions, the various utilities provided with Tracy, and the graphical user interface. It is a big improvement over the brief web page instructions that were available earlier. That's all for this video, but not everything that was added. A complete list of changes can be found in the release notes contained in the Tracy source repository. If you have any problems with profiling, feel free to submit bug reports, or even better, issue a pull request with your proposed changes.